Hi, it's Kristen. Welcome back to my kitchen. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful artisan sourdough loaf of bread. I've been baking with a sourdough starter for years now, but I just have recently perfected my artisan sourdough loaf. I know how to treat it. I know how, what you know what to do and the combination of the flowers to make it just this beautiful golden color. I've even gotten a little bit better at the scoring and that kind of thing just to make it really beautiful. So I want to show you step by step how I make it. Now I want to say I was intimidated by this for a long time. If you look up recipes, you will find that you have to come back to the dough multiple times a day and kind of fold it and stretch it. And it just always felt very overwhelming to me. I felt like, you know, I've got four kids and like, can I really handle this? This is a lot of work for a loaf of bread like is it worth it and let me just say it's worth it like the flavor that you get from this sourdough bread with you've taken the time to stretch and fold it you know you get the texture in there the crumb they call it with like all the little air bubbles it's light and airy and then the flavor that you get from the sourdough with it fermenting overnight is just it can't be beat and it really isn't as intimidating as it sounds all I do is just set a timer on my phone and every 45 minutes I come over I do the stretch and folds which literally it's just like wash my hands get my hand wet again after it's clean stretch and fold it four times with one hand I'm not it's not like I'm getting into the dough and you're making a big mess you're just simply stretching and folding it in the bowl putting the cover back on it leaving it for 45 minutes that kind of thing so it's not as intimidating as it seems and I want to walk you through it and show you everything that I know about how to make the most beautiful artisan sourdough loaf of bread tools you'll need are a kitchen scale, a dutch oven, a dough scraper, and a scoring knife. You'll also need a proofing basket, any size or shape is okay. And then for ingredients you'll need a freshly fed sourdough starter, I'm using organic all-purpose flour and then whole wheat flour as well as some salt. So to begin we're going to add 60 grams of ripe sourdough starter to our bowl here and after that we're going to add 300 grams of room temperature water. So I'm using filtered water from my Berkey water filter. And once you get up to 300 grams you're going to just use your a clean hand to mix this up. So you just want to kind of combine the starter with the water here get everything nice and combined, kind of almost dissolving the starter into the water. And then after that, we're gonna zero out our scale and it's time to add our flour. So we're gonna add 310 grams of the organic all-purpose flour. And then we're also gonna add 80 grams of whole wheat flour. So this is flour that I have ground in my grain mill, um, or you could just use you know, a whole grain flour from the store. So just 80 grams of that. And then we're gonna get our hands dirty again and get this all mixed up. So this is a very messy step, definitely the messiest step in this whole recipe. Our hands are gonna get covered in dough, but that's okay, it's worth it. So just get, the goal with this part is just, just get everything completely combined together. You don't want any dry flour or anything like that. So once this is all mixed together and nice and messy, um, we're going to let this sit for 20 minutes. After it sits for 20 minutes, we are going to add our salt. So we're going to add 8 grams of salt to our dough mixture and we're going to get our hands dirty again and we're going to get that salt all incorporated into the dough. This is really important. You want to, you know, you don't want any pockets of dough in here. I mean, pockets of salt in here. So you want the salt completely mixed in. And like I said, this part's super important. So take your time with it and make sure the salt is evenly distributed all throughout the dough. Once 
Once we get all the salt incorporated, we're going to cover the dough and let it sit for 30 to 45 minutes. We're moving into our bulk fermentation. So this is it. See the little air bubble there I was showing you. That means that the uh, sourdough starter, it's working, it's doing its thing. And so you're gonna wanna wet your hand and we're gonna do stretch and folds every 30 to 45 minutes for three to four hours. So this is our first stretch and fold. All you do is just simply get your hand wet so it doesn't, the dough doesn't stick. And then you're just gonna you know, ride, run your hand along the side of the bowl, fold it onto itself a few times, cover it again, set a timer on your phone, come back in 30 to 45 minutes, get your hands wet again, more stretch and folds just like that. Just like that, cover it again, set your timer, 30, 45 minutes, come back and do another stretch and fold. Every time you do this, it gets easier and easier and the dough kind of starts taking shape and um, it becomes less sticky. And again, covered it and let it sit, came back to do the stretch and folds again. This is the last time I'm gonna cover it and let it sit for another 30 to 45 minutes and then we'll come back and do the first shaping. So this is the pre-shape stage after the bulk fermentation. Um, I'm gonna pour this, I'm gonna try to Try to use the dough. The dough scraper helps with this. My dough this time, for whatever reason, was wanting to stick to the bowl, but you want to try to do this without deflating the dough um, and just kind of gently get it onto the flour there on the clean countertop. Make sure your hands are nice and floured as well because it is still pretty sticky at this point. So I'm just folding the, the edges inward here. Like I said, this is our pre-shape stage. So I'm just trying to get like a general kind of round shape. I'm using my little bench knife here to turn it over. We want the seam side down. I'm gonna cover it with a towel and we're gonna let the dough rest for about 20 minutes. Once the dough rests for 20 minutes, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna grab my proofing basket and get it nice and floured. So we're gonna do our final shape. So I'm gonna roll it back over so the seam side is up and we're going to do some pulling in of the edges and just kind of um, trying to, like I said, just give it its shape. So we're just pulling these edges in here and then we're gonna do a little tucking, rolling maneuver here and we're just trying to get everything, like I said, giving it shape and so it'll fit nicely into the little proofing basket and have a nice shape in the end. Cover it in some, the top in some flour and it's gonna go into the proofing basket, seam side up. Very important, definitely want the seam side up here. Just be gentle with the dough. You don't wanna deflate it or anything like that. We're just gonna cover it with a towel and it goes in the fridge overnight for eight to 12 hours. After it's been in the fridge for eight to 12 hours, you can take it out and let it sit on the counter. I like to let mine rest for about three hours after it comes out of the refrigerator. After you do that, it should feel like an inflated water balloon. Then you can preheat your oven to 450 degrees and put your cast iron Dutch oven in there to get that preheating. While that's preheating, we're gonna dump our dough out onto parchment paper as you can see, this proofing basket was brand new and it, I, apparently I didn't put enough flour in there, so it's stuck. I haven't had any issues with any of my other ones, but for whatever reason, of course, the one that I'm filming, it sticks. So anyway, it still turns out beautiful, So, and it tastes amazing, so that's all that matters. So we're gonna just do that and get out our razor and start scoring it. This is like my preferred scoring method here. You can do any kind that you would like. And then once the oven's preheated, we're gonna quickly take the lid off of the Dutch oven, put the uh, loaf in, put the lid back on as quickly as we can so we don't lose too much heat or steam. And then we're going to let it cook for 20 minutes with the lid on and then we're gonna take the lid off and then let it cook for another 25 to 30 minutes depending on your oven until it gets nice and golden brown. Here 
I am cutting into the sourdough loaf, I let this one cool overnight. You always wanna make sure that is completely cooled before you cut into it. I like to let mine rest on a um, like baker's rack overnight. Um, so as you can see, just the crumb here is just beautiful and airy and light. It's super soft on the inside and the crust is just the right amount of crispy in my opinion. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you enjoyed it, I would love it if you give it a thumbs up and definitely if you try out this recipe, let me know. You can tag me over on Instagram. I'm at Raising Nobles, or of course you can leave me a comment down below. I love talking to you guys, answering questions and just interacting with you. It's my favorite part. And if you're new here, I would love it if you would subscribe. I get out new videos every week and I would love it if you would stick around. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.